Now to our top story, Rishi Sunak has been dealt yet another blow as the latest polls reveal the Conservatives are on course for their worst ever general election result. A seat-by-seat -seat analysis gives the Tories fewer than 100 constituencies compared to Labour's whopping projected 468. It also shows Reform UK could cost the party up to 50 seats. But the Prime Minister is determined to stay positive with Downing Street hailing the government's bumper package <laughs> of economic reforms. As I said earlier, that's their words, not mine. Uh, they hailed this in a statement released last night. Well, joining us now is former Conservative Special Advisor Lauren McEvitt. Lauren, I mean, it doesn't look good, does it, for the Conservative Party? Would you be in the school of thought of go soon, Rishi, get the election out of the way before we hemorrhage any more support or let's give it a bit more time, the polls could narrow, we could still save something from this? So I'm in the latter camp, but not because I think that doing nothing results in the poll narrowing. Um, but I think that the longer that the Conservative government waits, the closer we get into August where we may have um, more fiscal headroom to play with, the larger the chance that the government goes for a second fiscal event later in the year and a 12th of December election rather than a slightly earlier autumn election. Do you think December? I think so. Interesting, interesting. Uh, in so far as you it gives feel them more the longer room to play it goes, and do a the tax better cut later in the year, yeah. or invest in public services. So as such you don't such agree with David Frost, who, who uh, is no. pretty much quoted. Well, he's not pretty much quoted. He is quoted as saying, "Every day, in every way, the polls get worse for us. Let's go now." <laughs> yeah, I don't agree with David Frost. Um, I, 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 generally speaking, don't um, because I don't believe that he actually knows an awful lot about what he's talking about and how the Commons works or how um, actually running a government functions. Um, I think he has a very loud mouth and not an awful lot of experience to back it up. <laughs> I mean, the risk, of course, okay. but delaying to even later on in the year is you're going to have a sort of annual migration, uh, well, illegal immigration statistics that are going to be eye-watering, I'd assume. This summer, I don't think there's going to be much let up. Let's see. It might be proven wrong, but it doesn't seem like the wind is blowing in the right direction for that. Um, but also, it could be that the energy bills soar again come winter and all of those problems from last winter, we're their ugly head and it just looks even worse than it does now. It could be, and that's the gamble that the government's got to take. Having said that, the longer that we wait, the longer the chart, the, the higher the likelihood that reform blow themselves up, um, in my opinion. I think that they are headed for some really bad press over some of the people that they're selecting to run for this election. Um, you've got people with track records of animal cruelty. You've got people um, who, who have, have, have had investigations for anti-Semitism. Um, you've got cranks who are in the well, strong anti-vax You say, that, you say that, but I don't think that's going to work. The Conservative Party have a number of politicians who are under investigation for things such as rape. Um, you know, you've got others who have been accused of doing all sorts of funny things with tax. I don't think any party can necessarily look at their entire cohort and say, oh, everyone's squeaky clean. That's very clean. true, but not and I don't think it works for the general. That's very true, but yeah. not every party doesn't, has the leader of the party in Richard Tice going on Twitter and threatening sitting members of parliament with the compromat that their party have on them if what they don't suddenly defect to them. That is almost unheard of. I don't think that's what Richard Tice has done at all. Though Richard Tice loves a bit of uh, litigation, so be careful what you say because he'll be after you. But um, no, I think it's look, I, I, I'm going to find it very difficult to sort of handle this even handedly. But I think that what I would say is I think that where once upon a time back in sort of 2015 with UKIP, the attack on candidates and trying to sully and besmirch the character of uh, uh, you know, UKIP, then the Brexit Party, then Reform UK did have a real impact. And people you know, in polite society around dinner tables went, oh, gosh, I don't think I can vote for them. I just don't think it's going to work this time round. That's a gamble I think the government are willing to take. Mm. Uh, respect to, to your view about the potential uh, downside of some of the candidates at Reform UK, but as Alex said, uh, look what Labour did at Rochdale. Uh, the other parties, all, all parties have this problem. Uh, candidates uh, turn out to be not great. Uh, but uh, don't you think that the reason Reform UK present a massive threat to this government? I mean, they're being projected as a direct threat to... Uh, Rishi losing at least 50 seats and they could be a factor in hundreds more. Uh, that what they're standing for, they're standing up and saying we're Conservatives, we're what Conservatives used to be. Do you remember the Conservatives under Margaret Thatcher? That's us, Reform UK. That's why people are gravitating towards them because they uh, have the image of traditional Conservatism whereas the Tories no longer do. I think that there is a, a rebalancing of the political spectrum that's happened over the course of the last 18 months or so that has created space for a UKIP Brexit party type uh, party on the right uh, of the UK political spectrum that has not really existed at, uh, over the course of the last three years. I'd say that Boris Johnson kind of knocked that space out and this is uh, you know, a resurgence of that. 
But I don't necessarily agree with, for example, Anne Widdicombe saying, you know, that that reform could be the party that breaks the two party system in the United Kingdom. I think that it is a much bigger struggle um, to do that than they had taken into consideration. You only need to look at the Lib Dems polling figures from those two MRRP polls um, in the last 24 hours, one of which said they get 20 seats, one of which said they get 48 seats. It is actually much more difficult than people consider to understand how those more minor parties are going to shake down. A polling difference of 2% in either direction sees Labour do really well in Scotland or Labour do incredibly badly in Scotland with the SNP. It is really, really hard to tell this far out. And the only poll that matters at the end of the day is the one on polling. But then maybe Anne is right in a sense that what she saw back in uh, 2015 was UKIP coming third in the country of millions of votes and having just one MP. And perhaps if people do say, I'm fed up with the two legacy parties, but I'm stuck in the stranglehold of a binary choice, that it may be the thing that people suddenly go that's it this system in the country doesn't work we don't want the conservative party nor do we want the labor party something at the very core has to change well no none of the big parties are advocating in favor of proportional well, representation of course they're not because it reform. wouldn't destroy and we them. did have a referendum on this um, not you know not too long ago within recent political AV, memory. Plus. I'm still you know sleeping in the t-shirt from the No to AV campaign, so um, <laughs> it can't be that long ago. Um, and I think that, that that everybody feels that this question has been put to bed for a generation. Um, similarly to the Scottish independence question, although the SNP are obviously trying to put that back on the table uh, fairly regularly. Um, I don't believe that proportional representation is the answer for the United Kingdom. We've just gotten rid of it in London um, in relation to the mayoralty elections, and I think that that's a good thing. Um, But I do see that there are arguments, particularly from supporters of smaller parties, um, that they are never going to get a bite at the cherry or they're never going to be able to get into government. Um, but It becomes anti-democratic, doesn't it? If people don't get what they want to vote for, that surely is not a good thing for democracy. Well, you have... You've got to, you can only have a choice of two because our system prevents anybody else from having anything but. Well, I mean, how that does the system really prevent it? See. You can still go into a you polling booth and back your, the... You, you just argue You can yourself. still go into a polling booth and, 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 and select the third, the fourth, the fifth party. If they are not doing enough, if they are not bringing in enough donations, if they are not putting out enough press to be able to say you should come and vote for us. At a certain point, that becomes the party's fault rather than the system's fault. Um, and uh, is it enough for Rishi Sunak to basically say, oh, we've turned the corner economically, you know, inflation will carry on coming down, we won't put up interest rates anymore, uh, you're going to feel a bit better off? Uh, is that enough? Is that enough? I think it isn't enough if we go for an election nowish. I think it might be enough if we go for an election later in the year. You know, it comes 6th of April, you've got the £50,000 uh, threshold on child benefit increasing to 60000 You've got the £5,000 increase on uh, VAT for small businesses, which is a big deal. Um, and I think that the longer some of those things have to bed in, the more people feel some of those things. Um, I, and w- alongside a prediction that inflation is going to come down, as well as, as I understand it, a prediction that um, previous figures around recession may be maybe uh, uh, recalculated upwards, yeah. we may be in a different economic situation later down later in the year. But I think that it may have been optimistic for him to say overnight that we are in a new economic uh, economic paradigm now. I think it, that, that's a slightly optimistic It seems take. to me that this is a very sort of Westminster uh, conversation that people like us who are politics wonks have, talking about fiscal headroom and this, that and the other. It must break your heart, actually. The majority of people at home are like, oh, Blimenek, the Conservative Party who played musical chairs in 10 Downing Street rather than run the country. Yeah, I don't think that our reputation has come out of the last two years looking good. Um, I think the reason why I think the reason why Liz Truss gets to go on Twitter on Easter and have everybody laugh at her once again for holding up holding a picture a of a lamb, lamb outside a church was it that a had picture of a lamb. No, no, she was holding, holding up a lamb outside what yeah. looked like a church that had recently it was weird. caught fire. Um, you know, a... Really, just there's no winning there, I, and I think that. Every single one of those things compounds oh. a reputational issue for us, which is, as you've just done, it's laughable. Yeah. And that might be you know, the laughability factor may be what finally kills yeah. us, actually. Quick last question. Well, we've got to go to break. But uh, we know what's coming throughout the summer. It's going to be uh, bad optics. It's going to be loads and loads of migrant boats already. Uh, they're yeah. charging across. Something like 390 came over this weekend. Mm. Uh, and that's going to get worse and worse as, as the weather gets better. How bad will that be for Rishi? It's not a good look, is it? I think a lot depends on what happens with the Rwanda vote when Parliament comes back from the recess. Um, if he gets a win on being able to, to, to return some yeah. people to uh, to an outpost in Rwanda, then perhaps politically he can salvage something. If he can make you know a rhetorical win on this and say, I have been prevented 
from doing this. He may have some wind put into his sails. Yes. At least this guy's got a plan. You know, I don't see Labour coming up mm. with a plan that says how they're going to stop this at the moment. They're just waiting for the Conservative <laughs> they don't Party have a plan to keep, for anything, to keep, to keep stuffing you, up. So I'll, I'll tell you that Labour's entire electoral plan is this. Do nothing. Do when nothing. your <laughs> enemies are making mistakes, don't interrupt. Yeah, exactly. So we won't see much yeah. of Starmer coming up, if you ask me. Uh, Lauren, that was great. Thank, Thank you. you and much. worth pointing out, actually, your former boss, of course, was uh, Secretary of State for Wales, David Jones. One of the good ones. I'm a yeah. big fan of uh, DJ. Great good. man. He'll be glad to hear it. Great man, great <laughs> Lauren parliamentarian. Lauren McKellar there.